Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to look at the great BitLocker controversy of 2025, by which I mean there really isn't a controversy, but we need to talk about it. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott, and this is a... This is a show I didn't really want to make, but I, I woke up one morning, like a lot of you, and I saw a story that said Microsoft is forcing users of Windows to encrypt their disks and people are losing their data. And then I saw the advice that we should never turn on BitLocker or this disk encryption feature. And what's Microsoft thinking? And yikes. <laughs> so um, let, me, let me clear the air on this one. So this started uh, on Reddit as things often do these days, this is the, the post that kind of started this whole thing off. This guy's a security expert and his complaint is that Microsoft now automatically enables BitLocker during onboarding. In other words, you set up a new computer when you sign into a Microsoft account. Um, that's not new. Um, this behavior actually started in windows eight. So that was 13 years ago ish. Um, goes on and on about security and whatever but his so what's the, what's the complaint here what what's going on so this is something we have talked about on this show that in windows 11 they've started pushing consumers to microsoft accounts right and so the original version of windows 11 um, when you signed in like i've signed in here with my microsoft account it would basically force you to do that there are workarounds for this there's workarounds for everything but at the time if you signed in with Windows 11 Pro, you got the opportunity to choose between the account types. You could choose a local account, which is the old fashioned way of doing this. Um, you could choose a Microsoft account. And of course you can choose a, a work or school account, which is like an intra ID account now, or what used to be an active directory or Azure active directory account, you know, an account for work or school. Okay. When you sign in with an online account to Windows 11, it encrypts the disk. You want this. This is, <laughs> this is just good security. Um, in fact, several months ago now, I did an episode about whether it was safe to sign in with a local account, Windows 11. It's not as safe, but you can make it safer. And one of the things you need to do is get that disk encrypted. The reason you encrypt a disk is because if the device is physically stolen and someone accesses that chip or that set of chips or whatever it is that constitutes the storage, they can't get at the contents of it, right? If it's encrypted, if it's not encrypted, it's just wide open. Anyone could just look at it, take it, steal it, do whatever they want with it. The problem uh, with encryption that the security expert on Reddit was pointing out is that Microsoft doesn't really communicate that this is happening. Um, I, I think of it as a, a big benefit, <laughs> um, but their fear is that you could lose access to your Microsoft account, which is remotely possible. It could happen, I suppose. And if you lost access to your Microsoft account, you would then lose access to the ability to recover your computer if for some reason something went wrong with the boot process and it couldn't load Windows normally, you might be asked to enter what's called a BitLocker recovery key. If you can't get into your Microsoft account, you can't access that key because when BitLocker or drive encryption is automatically enabled for you, you don't it's put in your Microsoft account. It's basically put in OneDrive. You don't know, you don't know this. Like in other words, this seems underhanded. Microsoft is doing this behind your back. Um, my argument is that this is what you want. This is a good thing, but apprised of this information, you may want to go take a look at this. And one of the things you can do is back up that key. You can put it somewhere else. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to look at that right now. So this would have come up when we did um, that, episode again several months ago about um signing in with a local account if you go and look at the disk there's nothing really to suggest um anything you know is happening here with encryption or whatever i think you could probably look around and find it eventually but you really have to know that this is what's going on and so in windows 11 they've really simplified this user interface um you go to privacy and security and then you go to device encryption and if you've signed in with an online account of any kind, so this would be work or school or a Microsoft account, um, this will be enabled for you by default. Um, strongly recommend leaving that alone. <laughs> okay. Um, this particular computer is running Windows 11 
Pro, not Home. So I actually get BitLocker Drive Encryption, which is a user interface that is actually kind of old school and uh, desktop based and dates back several years. But it allows you to do some things that you can't do on Windows 11 Home, including the ability, by the way, to encrypt portable disks, like from a USB key or whatever, or a hard drive. Um, but the other nice thing about this interface is that, which doesn't support dark mode, right? Because it's so old, is it gives you this backup your recovery key option. And if you click here, you'll get three choices, right? So you can save to your Microsoft account, which it already is, by the way. Um, you can save to a file. And I suspect, because this is the disk that is being encrypted, that if I went into the desktop, for example, and try to save it, it's going to say no. You can't save the recovery key to the encrypted disk because the point of this recovery key is to access the encrypted disk if you get locked out of it, right? So you can't put it there. So you have to plug in a USB key or an external hard drive or if you have a second hard drive, whatever it might be. You can't save it to the disk. That's good. That's what you want. You could also print the recovery key. Um, in this case, you could print it to PDF. And uh, the hilarity here is that if I do that, I just saved it to the disk. <laughs> so that's how you can bypass that. But okay. Now, the problem is you don't get this interface in Windows 11 Home, which, by the way, is an oversight on Microsoft's uh, part. It does have this uh, link here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go to it. I've already loaded it. But uh, this will go to the Microsoft account website if you click it here. So when I bring up this, uh, oops, sorry. If I bring up the browser here, what you can see is the beginning of my gigantic list of BitLocker recovery keys. And so in this case, what you need to know is the name of the machine. And the name of this machine is probably HP Mini. So with that, armed with this information, I could then uh, search that page for that thing. I'm not going to do that. I'm, if you look at these recovery keys at the beginning of this page, these are all from computers that are, are long gone, right? So it's safe to show this to somebody. Nobody can, you know, hack into my uh, computers and, and get this. But what you could do with this is just copy, say that was the correct key, copy it somewhere and, um, and then save it, right? Put it in a safe place. You know, one of those safe places, by the way, is Personal Vault uh, in OneDrive, right? This will put it in the cloud. This is also encrypted, and this is something that's hard to get into. You have to provide a two-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, kind of, that's a nice place to store something like this. In fact, that, that is where I store things like that. Um, so that's that. Um, you can also, I, I wouldn't do this, but uh, in that interface that I just closed stupidly, um, if you wanted to, I suppose you could turn it off and then turn it back on. <laughs> and then when you did that, you would be prompted. Well, no, actually you, are, you wouldn't be prompted because you're saving it to your Microsoft account. So it would, it would save to a, a new version, a new key, right? To your um, uh, Microsoft account. And you could access it again from the Microsoft account website. So I, telling people that they should turn off encryption because they might lose access to the data on that disk is to me irresponsible, especially from someone who's supposed to be a security professional. But the other part of this is that if you're doing things correctly, right, you should never lose data anyway. It's horrible to wake up in the morning and turn on a computer and have it not boot. Um, and by the way, if you haven't seen the screen, let me see if I can bring this thing up here. Um, this is what it looks like if you have to enter this key. So this is a 48 character alphanumeric code, essentially. Um, it is a nightmare typing this in, <laughs> right? The good news is if you get it wrong, it doesn't delete it and make you type the whole thing again. You can kind of look at it and, and try to get it right, whatever. But um, this is the type of screen you'll see if something goes horribly wrong with your computer. Um, you won't see it otherwise. So this is bad. But in the good news department, um, if you're if you're doing things correctly, like I said, and by correctly, what I mean is if you, this is a kind of a clean computer, there's nothing here on the desktop. This desktop is not in OneDrive folder backup, but it could be, and it would be by default. Um, as long as your personal files, your data is all syncing to the cloud, the worst thing that's going to happen to you is that you have to maybe have to reinstall Windows, which by the way, you can, you can do without having to enter your BitLocker recovery key, right? You can just blow the whole disk away. You might, you'll have to reinstall your apps. Um, we, we don't really have too many apps anymore where there's activation codes and we have to worry about that kind of stuff. But 
Um, if you do have things like that, um, you know, you should be saving that information, by the way, save that to your personal ball, right? Um, I've talked about how I bulk install apps using Winget, the Windows Package Manager. I have to go in and sign and do all that kind of stuff. But um, there's nothing on this computer or any of my computers that's sitting out in a place where it's not being synced to the cloud at all times. So if I turn this thing on and it doesn't work, yes, that's a hassle. Uh, yes, I might have to uh, restore the computer. I might actually have to reinstall the operating system. It's not great. Um, but know where to find that BitLocker recovery key. And then that's the easiest course just to get into the computer. But again, if all goes south, you actually have a hardware problem. You, you, this thing is not going to boot. It's not going to matter if this thing's encrypted or not. And it's not going to matter because your stuff is safe. Right. And so just do, just do things correctly and you'll be fine. <laughs> you know, uh, all of your devices are encrypted these days, by the way, if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, a Mac, right. Every one of those things is encrypted. Um, that's the way we do things today. It's good security. So I don't see a controversy to Microsoft automatically enabling disk encryption or BitLocker on people's computers. I do agree they could communicate this a little bit better. Um, in fact, it wouldn't be a horrible thing to give people the opportunity to save that key somewhere else during setup, right? I think they're trying to streamline it and not make it take forever. But um, if you know what you're doing, you, you know where you can go to get the stuff. It's pe Most people can Google, you know. If you have a BitLocker recovery screen like that blue screen I showed you, you would probably Google that and that would tell you where you could get it. You could get it on your phone and you could sign in. Again, I suppose there's this random chance that your computer could go south and Microsoft took away your Microsoft account. That doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> you know, if that happens to you, things are really going south. But uh, you can be prepared for that one too, right? Because you can save that recovery key somewhere else. It doesn't have to only be or be at all in your Microsoft account. You can put it wherever you want, right? So um, I, if you're really worried about it, I save it, into, you know, save it to a couple of different places, I guess. Um, but, but don't fall for the FUD. This is, uh, this is the right thing for Microsoft to do. And for you as a user of Windows, it's the right thing for you to do. Your disk should be encrypted, period. So I hope you found this useful. We'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We love you. If you would like to know more about Club Twit and watch these videos without any ads, and get all the other benefits of joining. Uh, you can find out more about that at twit.tv slash club twit. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week.